friends and welcome back. For those of you who are new, my name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects. So today I have updates on my Sew Scrappy Spools Quilt Along. I did receive my next Sew Sampler box so we're going to open that live. I have not opened it myself. I have no idea what's in there. So uh, you get to uh, view that along with me and then I have a whole stack of customer quilts again today. Tons and tons of small quilts today. Uh, so I was able to knock out a bunch of these because small ones I can get several done in a day um, and so just lots and lots of those to go over today. So I hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying uh, fall as it's beginning to creep in here to Indiana. I'm sure other places I know down south you may not be yet but uh, the hint is in the air. So let's start with Sew Scrappy Spools. I've been uh, sharing my updates on this. Actually, last week I shared my August blocks and I do have my September blocks done. Um, and it's not even the end of September. I'm so excited. Uh, so uh, this is a pattern available on the um, Fat Quarter Shop and they are hosting this Sew Along for the year. So um, it should be really easy to keep along, keep up with, and actually if you're just starting you shouldn't have any trouble catching up. Um, usually each month it's in between four and eight blocks a month. They're very simple blocks. Um, this month we had eight blocks to do, four of one kind and four of another. Some months it's only four blocks, only one kind. So uh, a real fun quilt, so if uh, something you'd like to join in on, uh, don't be shy. <laughs> There's still time to catch up or just do it on your own. You know, I'm doing mine all scrappy, and the only thing I'm keeping constant is the white background fabric that you see, and I am doing even scrappy on the spool ends. So um, in the pattern itself, it gives you yardage for um, completing the spool ends all in the same fabric. I am uh, using my scraps from my bins, and so each month I try to use the same brown for those entire blocks. Um, but over the course of the quilt, it's all different blocks. So let me show you what we have today. The blocks for this month were the Sew Star block and the Sew Stripes block. So let me show you the Sew Stripes one first. This one, um, super simple to do. All it is is strips. So here's my first one. This one's a little lighter color, as you can see, a lot of grays in this one and that mint green. I tried to stay away from whites in the middle just because I had whites on the edge, um, but this one is pretty, um, pretty light in itself. And I didn't plan this out. All I did was take, I didn't even cut my um, strips five and a half inches. They're one and a half inch this way. Um, but I just took some one and a half inch strips that I had in my bucket and sewed them together and then actually cut my square at five and a half inches so that um, I didn't have to mess with cutting those anyway. So I just did it all at once when they were all together. So that's one. Here's a second one, a little more fall feel. A lot of the colors in a lot of the fabrics in my scrap bin that I'm using do have muted colors to them. Um, that's a colorway that I tend to have a lot of that I enjoy using. Um, so a few brights here and there to uh, perk things up, but it is pretty muted colors. Just one lighter print, just that gray. Actually, I think it was in the first block as well. You can see the brown that I'm using for this month. Um, again, just from my stash, this was um, a fat quarter that I had picked up from um, our in-person guild. We had a, um, an auction in August, and that was a fat quarter uh, bundle of browns that I would actually picked up uh, then. Here is my third one. This one's probably my favorite just because I love those muted colors, uh, especially this time of year. It just makes me feel fall with, uh, with those. And then the fourth one, um, I followed the, um, the layout, and this one was actually turned. So when this one goes in the quilt, it's going to be sideways like this. Um, but that way all the blocks, all of the stripes are still horizontal. So when you're making this one, you make it with the stripes vertical. But when it is set into the quilt, it will be horizontal. So those are my four stripes blocks. Really easy to do. You could make a whole quilt just with those. You know, you really could. The second one was the Sew Stars, or was it Sew Something Else? Sew Star block. These were a lot of fun to do. Let me show you. 
very scrappy. I did not try to plan these at all. <laughs> just tried to, uh, you know, coordinate the colors a little bit just so that I didn't have to, you know, reds next to each other and that kind of thing. Um, the background print, I wanted to keep light but not white, because I didn't want it to um, blend in with this one. I wanted to keep a distinct spool. So I went with some lighter colors. Here was a, just a plain gray. Um, and then I just pulled things from my stash and laid those across there. Um, and then chose some sort of center that would look nice with that. So that one has the orange center. This one's a little brighter. Again, I went with a gray um, background print for the spools. Or, or you know for the spool body of it and then tried to go with some um, good contrast colors on top of that gray and um, even though the gray has the pattern to it with you know I tried to make a good contrast between the the colors and a bright blue that's a little out of my colorway but um, but when you add it into the quilt it gives your eyes some some fun spots to look at here I went with a lighter color that I had in that uh, scrap bin as well, and this is like a mint green. And again, just tried to do some um, good contrast. So the gray was a little darker, so I could use it with this green, and it looked well. I didn't use, um, you know, a lighter gray in any of these because, I, again, I wanted there to be nice contrast where it stood out really strong. And I love the red center on that one. Again, I used a red center on this one, and this light background is a um, little bit of a paisley print. It's a light blue, and again, it's darker. So, you know, in this whole block, I would say it was a medium print because my white is my light print. Here, I tried to use a lot of dark prints in here, and this would be my medium tone. I wanted something that these, the star is going to stand out, um, but this is gonna be distinct from the background of the spool. So just that it's a light blue, you know, almost a baby blue type um, with the white paisley type scribbles on there. And then just a lot of my muted colors. I saw a lot of this orange in here just because that was a fabric that I had um, and uh, wanted to use up. So those were a lot of fun. Those used a lot of little scraps. These were um, two inch squares actually and I used a lot of little scraps. So don't throw those away. There's always a use for them, right? So those are my so scrappy spools for this month. And now I'll put those away. And the next blocks aren't until October. Uh, the middle of October, uh, October 12th, is when the pattern calls for. And we only have um, two more types of blocks to do. We have a triangles block and a tulip block. And let me show you those real fast. That's the tulip one. Oh, the triangle one will be a lot of fun. All right, let me find that on here. On the um, looks like it's this one right here. If I'm looking at it right, yeah. Depending on where your fabric placement is on that one, it's going to look a little different. But uh, that's the one it is. So this one. Right here, we're going to be making four of those in October, and then we'll be making four of the tulip ones in November, and then it's time to put the quilt together. So, almost there. I uh, can't believe 2023 is almost done. In leaning into this last quarter here, aren't we? But anyway, my stack of blocks, let me show you all of them. Not individually, I'll just show you the whole stack. So this is my whole stack going on and um, been a lot of fun. Good way to use up my scraps. I'm not sure that I made much dent in that in that uh, scrap bin, but actually this uh, weekend when I was working on those um, blocks, when uh, I would cut some squares for those blocks that I was doing, and then I was actually cutting the rest of whatever piece I had out into different sizes and putting them in my um, other buckets. Let me show you those real quick. The advantage of doing my videos in my sewing room is I can grab things on the spur of the moment. So my scrap bin, let me just set this down. So 
the scrap bin I've been pulling for for the so scrappy spools. This one is a uh, just a plastic tub that I keep in a separate part of my sewing room. I have three of these tubs. These fabrics are usually about a quarter yard, fat quarters or a quarter yard, something that's not going to fit on my comic board. Um, you know, smaller than that. They're not cut into smaller sizes, and I'll show you what I do with that. So these are like the in-between stuff. So if I get fat quarters, if I pick up fat quarters that aren't in a bundle or aren't coordinating with something else, then I'll stick them into these. And I had just pulled out this one basket, and this is what I was trying to use for my sew scrappy spools. And I, I think I could make a dozen more of those quilts. Um, with all the fabrics that are in here. So this weekend, what I was doing when I was using a piece uh, of the, um, a part out here, so not, so let's say, you know, this piece. So let's say I pulled this out and I needed a two inch strip off the end. Then um, I would cut that two inch strip. I don't just cut one square out of it. Um, I would cut a two inch strip off of there and then I would cut what I needed for the so scrappy stars or whatever it was and then the rest of that I would go ahead and cut into two inch squares and I was actually sticking into this bucket then. So I have these right underneath my uh, cutting table. These are just um, locker baskets from Hobby Lobby and um, this one I had... Um, chalk written on there. This should say two inches. It's rubbed off. But everything in this um, scrap bin is two inches wide then. Where the ones in the plastic tub, they're all different sizes, all about a quarter yard or a fat quarter, but they're not specific sizes. So that one is great to use for my sew scrappy spools quilt because I need different sizes at different times. I need two inches or I need a five inch or whatever and I can pull from that. This bin, then, when I finished with that strip over the weekend, and I would go ahead and cut the rest of those into two-inch squares, and then I would drop them into this bucket. So, um, like some of the browns that I did, I went ahead and cut the rest of that strip, and then I threw those in here so that when I am done with that quilt along, um, I don't want to have all of that fabric still in there, to be honest. So as I'm working through here, to, especially towards the end, when I know I'm not going to be using much more of those fabrics for the rest of the blocks that, have, that I have to come, as I'm finishing up with a piece, then I'm going ahead and cutting it and sticking it into my scrap bins. And then I can use these anytime I'm working on a quilt that I just need two inch squares. I need to, that may be one of my bigger goals in 2024 is to, is to try doing some of, probably I will be using uh, Lori Holt's um, Scrappiness is Happiness book because she gives you specific sizes and you're using up specific sizes of your scraps. So um, all of these two inch squares that were left over from um, those So Scrappy stars. So here's like the brown when I cut the end for the spools and then um, whatever was left, you know, I just cut into two inch squares and I dropped here in this bucket. And that way I don't have to spend a lot of time when that quilt along is done going through and cutting all of those things. If I'm doing it, what I mean is when that quilt along is done and I have a whole pile of scraps on in that scrap bin, I don't have to then spend an hour or more cutting up more things to drop in this bucket. If I'm doing it as I'm going, they're all scraps anyway, and so when I finished up a block, I would just finish cutting whatever I had left and dropping it into the specific sizes. So I have one and a half inch bin, I have a two inch bin, I have a two and a half inch bin, um, I have a three and a half inch bin, I have a five inch, and then um, seven inches I keep in another spot. So I don't have very many of those. Um, but I just wanted to start cutting up some of those and getting them done. <laughs> um, and using those up. All right. So that's my So Scrappy Spools. I'm going to be putting that away till October. My plan for this week is to get the, um, the machine applique done on my um, Calico Garden Quilt. That's my goal for this week. So I'm not even going to touch the So Scrappy Spools now until um, October. I did receive my September sew sampler box and I have not opened it. Do you see? It's still sealed. So you and I are gonna do this together. Um, I usually do this on my own and go through it and do my, um, you know, look for the links and do my um, 
the quilt along block before I show you. But I just decided today you're going to see it right along with me. All right. Ooh. Rustic Autumn. Ooh. I love the colorway. That's, ooh, my goodness. Oh. All right. 20% off coupon for certain things. The coupon always on the back. And oh, wow, look at this. Oh, I was just talking about this. All right, this is um, Fancy That Design House. This is her new line, Dawn on the Prairie. I was just talking about this with um, some ladies in my um, online guild. And uh, somebody had done a quilt using part of this prairie, this fabric, and I'm like, I need to go look that up. And now I have some of my own. Oh, I'm so excited. So this is a jelly roll. Let me see if it's, uh, it feels pretty big, so it may be a full jelly roll. 24 piece jelly roll. Includes a generous sampling of all the prints from confetti dots to whimsical floral sprays and invites you to fall in. I love Fancy This Design House. I love her colorway. Um, I love that she uses scripture. She has t-shirts, she has fabric, she has panels that use a scripture. Very encouraging and I just love it. I love everything about her that I have seen so far. I love her colorways. Um, I love that she's using scripture and hymns and things on fabric. Um, I feel like we need to be doing that in our homes. We need to be putting uh, scripture on our, our doorpost, as the Bible says. And, um, and what better way than to put it on your fabric, put it into your quilts, have it wrapped around you so everywhere you see, you're reminded of, um, of all that goodness. I am so excited about this one. All right, let me pull. I'm going to dig through here and see what the, the um, quilt is that they gave. Grove quilt pattern. What do you think of that? So it is a junior jelly roll because it only has the 24. So this quilt pattern be, is 64 by 66. It uses that light blue. It's almost like barns, could be houses, more like barns to me. I like the trees. Grove. So you need a three and a quarter yards of the of the blue and then the front of those houses is another one and eighths inch and then the binding. And usually I haven't looked obviously because I've just opened this up. Usually Fat Quarter Shop has uh, all the additional fabrics that you need and they sell them as a finishing kit for uh, this quilt. So I'll decide. I don't know if I'll use that one or something else. Actually um, They show a different fabric. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'll get to it here. Um, on the back of this, I'm not going to show you the coupon. But this quilt is shown on the back of the insert, and it says another jelly tastic project idea for the Grove Dawn on the Prairie Junior Jelly Roll is the Jelly Roll Railway. And it doesn't say where to find that at. I'm going to have to do some searching. Download and print the free pattern. Oh, it's a free one. And I have the coupon. And I have the code on the back of here. And there's a tutorial and then the free pattern. I, I'm just going to be honest. I like that one better than I like this one. Nothing wrong with this one, but I like this one. I like that. I wonder what size it is. So I'm going to have to do that code. I can't share it because it's part of the box. I will look and see if they have any of these boxes. Ooh. I will look and see if they have any of these boxes um, a la carte. And um, if you like that, maybe you could get it too. Ooh, that makes me pretty excited. I like that one. All right. Next in the box is some endurance rotary blades. Um, I have talked, I have heard others talk about these. And I did. I'm looking through my... I thought at one time I had bought some of the endurance ones, but I don't see them here now, so I don't know if I actually did or not. So these are supposed to last extra, extra long, 
compared to the normal rotary blades. Um, these are done by Ulfa effortly, effortlessly. The 40, okay. Cuts effortlessly for twice as long as standard blades. It retains its sharp edge for an extended period of time. So it's supposed to last twice as long. This is um, 45 millimeters. I do use a 45 millimeter cutter. I have two. I have the larger, the 60 inch, and then I have the 45. If I am, um, to be honest, I've used this, the 45 inch more lately than I have my bigger one. Um, I need a new blade for my bigger one, so I tend to reach for this one um, more often. And I do have um, that over there. All right, next up. This one says, Easy Press Pen. Fill with Easy Press Fabric Treatment. So, here, let me just open this up. Let's look and see what it is. I said, you're getting this live. I've not looked at any of these yet. So an Easy Press Pen. So it looks like you fill the pen up with this treatment right here. Fill with the treatment, piece like an expert, and press seams precise and flat. So, is it permanent or is it like a, um, hold it, like I could use it for my calico garden, you know, to hold it while I'm doing my, um, let it dry and enjoy crisp, flat seams after pressing. So, stiffens fabric like starch or starch alternative for precise flat seams. So when you press it, then it stays down. Interesting. I'll have to try that. I don't know, would that work on bindings then or is it gonna leave it stiff? So then you can, uh, did you see the tip of that? So it's almost like one of the um, chalk markers or the fabric marker type things because it presses in. So after you fill this, then you would press against it for the, the treatment to get down into the tip and then you could run it along the seams. See, it's stuff like this that I would not necessarily buy at a quilt store um, when I saw it, but I don't know until I try it. So it's something that I'll try, and it could be the next best thing. <laughs> um, and by getting these boxes, then I get to try things like that that I wouldn't otherwise use. So I'll try that and I'll let you know what I think. Then the next thing is a sewing tray. Oh, I saw somebody make these out of fabric. Was it fabric? Yes, yeah, somebody showed me these out of fabric. All right, this is the Bits and Bobs Sewing Tray. The sweet sewing inspired tray, perfect accessory for your sewing table. Um, exclusively found at the Fat Quarter Shop. Maybe it was, was it Kimberly that was talking about it? I can't remember. Somebody was talking about it, how you can take this to retreats because it lays, lies flat in your bag. But then, maybe it was Kimberly, now that I think about it. Let me get this open. Oh, I have to use scissors. Okay. So if I remember, if it wasn't Kimberly Jolly, then I'll, I'll um, link it in the notes who it really was. But somebody made these out of fabric and then they put snaps on the corners so that you can take this on retreats and it lies flat in your bag. Um, but then when you get there, then you can snap these corners together. And then it makes this nice little bowl that you can set on your table while you're sewing and you can put all your snippets of thread after you know so you don't need a uh, trash can next to you or anything all your little snippets of thread in there and then you can take it over and I like that it's this plasticky um, coated type feel because then everything will slide right out of it where if you made them out of fabric it might stick a little bit and you know your threads might stick a little bit so that's cute so it's called a sewing tray Actually, faux leather is what it says. As a catch-all for, oh, so it says you could use it as a catch-all for your rotary cutters, your scissors, small rulers, and more. 
even on, you know, even at a retreat. So you could take it with you and, and put your things back in here each time so you knew where they were, or you could use it as a small little trash can. Um, and then once you're ready to go, you pop it back open and it lies flat in your, in your case. So really cute. All right. And then the last object always in the bag is the Sew Flowers Quilt Along, the block of the, the month. This flower is the anemone. Did I say that right? Anemone. Took me a long time to learn to say that. So this one should be fun. I will try to have this done by next time. No promises, but uh, I'll try to get this done so I can show it to you next month. Really cute. And like I said before, I am doing mine in browns and pinks. This, um, the pattern is done with the Sugarberry Collection. I've seen the Sugarberry Collection in person in a fabric store. It is beautiful. It really is pretty. And like I said before, I think it's prettier in person than it is printed on the pattern. Um, so you might want to make that for yourself out of that one. Really cute. All right. There it was live. Everything. I'm excited um, for that fabric. I am excited for that. And I literally was just talking um, to the uh, gals in my uh, online membership and somebody had used that fabric line and I'm like, I'm going to have to get that one. I'm going to have to. All right, let's move on to some customer quilts. And like I said, I have a ton of baby quilts today, all smaller sizes. Um, and so we will start with this one, the Scrappy Stars one. And so here are some larger pictures. <laughs> This one is so adorable. It's um, I, I it's the pinks and the blues, but they're they're a muted color, and I just I really like that. Um, I like the the um, the daintiness of it, the simpleness of it. Um, just the it's just very calming. <laughs> so this is uh, Scrappy Stars. This is from the Quilt Club book that is done by Paula Barnes and Mary Ellen Robison. And I have a link for that. Um, it's actually sold on Amazon. And so um, I found a link for that. And that is down in the description if you'd like to do this. Now, um, very similar to um, the So Scrappy Stars that I just did for my quilt along. So do you see how it's the... Um, it's um, where you put one piece of fabric here, fold that one back, and then you do the second one so that it's got this crisscross effect right here. Um, the difference with this one, this is not the same size uh, because this block is not the same, but um, the difference with this one is they've done half square triangles on the corner. Now, if you follow Lori Holt very much, you know that she would not make this block like this ahead of time. She would make this whole scrappy stars block and then add those easy corner triangles on the end. So just a choice there if that's something that you would like to do. Doesn't have to be done. Um, you don't have to make these four ahead of time. You can wait until this block is together and then you can just add your easy corner triangles on the on the side. So this fabric line is um, Primrose Hill by Melanie Colette. Really cute. And you've got to see this backing fabric. This is a bubble minky. Super soft, super, oh, just adorable. Adorable. Just adds to that daintiness and the feel of it. Really cute. And I do, uh, I have a couple, two. Maybe I have two quilts today with Minky on the back. I don't have a trouble with using Minky. My only suggestions, um, best if you can buy um, a wide one where um, the selvages don't have to be cut, if you can leave, and, and you don't have to piece it. So if it's large enough for your quilt, um, if you can leave those selvages on, it creates uh, much less of the lint and the fuzz and everything that comes with dealing with Minky. Even when I laid this out, I had one quilt on top of another. You'll probably see from the quilt underneath um, that it'll have a little bit of that lint on it. Until this is bound, you're gonna have that. It just flies everywhere. So if, um, if you're sending that to me, uh, if you leave the selvages on, I like the selvages because I can load those onto the bars of the long arm and there's much less stretch with those. 
and it just cuts down on the lint. And um, so I don't know about your long arm quilter, that's just my preference. I prefer the selvages left on. So if you can cut, have it cut wide enough as, and if it's long enough for your quilt top. I have done pieced minky backings before too, not that there's a problem with that. Again, you just have a little more stretch, you have um, a little more lint because you've got the, any place that it's cut is where you've got the lint that comes out. So no trouble there. This, this bubble minky is really cute too. I don't know if that's the original, the real name, but that's what I call it. So the pantograph on this one, we went with the ginger snap. And I'll just pull this in closer because these are baby quilts. You can see these a lot closer. I'll also insert some pictures. So the ginger snap does the smaller, um, the smaller circle with a larger circle, and then it does the couple loops. I think we even talked about this one last week. Again, I like to um, make the quilt pattern, the quilt design, similar to the size of the quilt. So these, this quilt, not the quilt maybe itself, but the pieces in it are smaller, daintier. So I kind of coordinate that unless it's unless um, the maker doesn't like a tighter quilting. Um, and then, you know, then we can make it bigger. But this one I made, you know, this is about a quarter size, maybe a half dollar size is the size of that, but it coordinates well with the size of the blocks that are there. I did use white thread because of the white backing. Um, a lot of white in this quilt, and I didn't want to pull away from um, just, I wanted those fabrics to pop out and not the, the quilting. The quilting is just the texture. Didn't want to color there. And especially with the, that, this is more of a creamy white minky on the back, um, but a color would have just, uh, it would not have done well on that. I don't think, I think the white, you just wanted the texture from it. And with minky, the other thing I like is the threads really sink into the minky. So you're getting a lot of texture. If you use a color, you are going to see some of that color, especially if you used a contrasting color, you would see some of that. When I'm using a light color thread, um, a very similar color thread to the minky, it's going to soak right in and you really don't even see those on the back. Very precious. This would be really cute with, um, with a scrappy binding on it. Using a lot of those same prints with a scrappy binding, I think would be a really cute. And I failed to say this is Margaret's. This is Margaret's quilt. First time I've done anything for Margaret and I actually have a second one. So here are some pictures of her second quilt. How fun is this one? This pattern is called Baby Buckaroos. This is a pattern done by Mary Hickey. And the fabric, uh, Margaret said she probably purchased at Hobby Lobby several years ago. Um, so you could look there if you, uh, maybe they still have it. They carry some of the same fabrics for quite a while. So I like how she has fussy cut this, um, this adorable little, uh, the young cowboys or the little buckaroos. <laughs> um, fussy cut them for the squares. So here's the square right there. And so maybe a six inch square. I really didn't measure it. And then you can see right next to it. Then we have a nine patch. Okay. And we're just alternating those blocks. But do you see the secondary effect that occurs when you put those half square triangles? That's what I failed to mention. So she fussy cut this square and then added these blue... Um, easy corner triangles on each corner. Again, like we just talked about on the last quilt, uh, that can be done at the end. On this one, you probably would because you have nothing else. You just have a piece. So you would add these onto the corner and fold them back. Um, but then with putting this one, so we've got alternating blocks and then we have um, the nine patch, but do you see how it creates that? Uh, with the nine patch, then it creates that radiating effect into the next one and even around the uh, novelty print, then you get almost this um, oval. Do you see that? It's again, you got to adjust your eyes. So if you look here, I see the star. If you look here, then I can see 
almost the oval around around that print. Really cute. So two blocks, that's all it is. Very simple, um, but by the way she's done the fabrics, um, I love the, the blue gingham and then the horseshoe print is really cute. Then she's echoed that same horseshoe print in a, a skinny binding, not binding, a skinny border, and then a dark blue, the same dark blue that's on the easy corner triangles. Then she's used that as a larger border. Really fun. And the backing, so cute. So again, it matches with the front. Um, it is the same fabric as used here, but it's a contrast to the front. So we're using the red on the back uh, where we did mostly blues on the front here. Then we switch and we do the red on the back. So we've got a hint of it on the front, but how striking is that? It's that horseshoe print is really, really cute. So for the pantograph, let me pull this in close so that you can see. This was called Horseshoes. And there you can see the horseshoe, and then there's some stars with it too. And those just um, back and forth. I did a cream color thread, an off-white, so that it blended with these. You know, on the blues it wasn't going to be really bright, um, but it blended well with the, uh, the novelty prints as well. Just adorable. Let's see. The back. Kind of hard to see the... The pantograph on the back, it blends in really well. So this would be a great quilt to use any novelty prints that you had, any um, little prints that you wanted to fussy cut for, uh, to highlight in those squares, and then a nine patch um, beside it, and just alternate those back and forth, and you've got a really cute quilt. This quilt measured um, 38 by 37, so nearly square, nearly square. So cute. All right. We'll move on to the next one. Here are some larger pictures. This cute little quilt was sent in by Lori and uh, the pattern name of this is called Slippas. <laughs> so slippers, but with an A, Slippas. Um, and this is an Aloha quilt designs. And she said the flip flops were made from fabric that was provided in a quilt kit. And then the batiks that she used for the sashing and the border were ones from her stash. And then the white is um, also from her stash. So really cute. Um, very beachy theme there. For the back, we used just um, a dark purple batik. Again, a contrast to the front. Really cute, the flip-flops here. I assume those are applique on. Um, yeah. So the flip-flop itself is even applique, and then the strap is applique on top of that. And she has done machine applique with a buttonhole stitch with uh, around the slipper she has done uh, around the base she has done a buttonhole stitch around the edges and then uh, just done a straight stitch on the um, on the strap part of the sandal really cute then for the pantograph we use what's called storm curls so adding some curve and some swirl almost like there's a storm brewing or the waves of the sea um, you know, kind of continued that whole beachy wave water type feel. Very fun. Just makes you think of Hawaii, doesn't it? So the thread, I did um, a light purple. Lori asked for a light purple thread. Um, a really good choice. Let me get in close. Let me see if you can see. The light purple blends really well. Um, with the batiks and then you can see it on the white but from back here it just looks texture that light purple did not um, overshadow any of the quilting just added a nice uh, second element to it there really cute I assume Lori's going to use this for a wall hanging or something like that 
very fun. That'll make you think of summer and uh, not, not the fall weather that we're experiencing, huh? Uh, really cute, Lori. All right, I have a second one from Lori. Here are some larger pictures of that one. So Lori's second quilt is a rail fence, um, fence rail pattern. She calls it the rail fence pattern. So done in strips and then we turn them. Um, very simple block to do, a good beginner block to practice, but then you can get some really neat designs. Called the rail fence because of the way when you turn each one of the blocks, so here is a block uh, and the black, the black, the black, the black, the black. You can see how it goes down much like a fence line. And that's where the name of it comes from. But they are just strips. So the block itself, um, right here. So we start with the, the black polka dot. Then we have a red um, um, gingham. And then a black heart. And then a red polka dot. Each one is done the same, but we then turn it each time and it's in the layout is how you get that. So Lori says that the, um, the middle part here, this was a curated fat quarter bundle. I'm not sure of the designer. It was curated by Primrose Cottage. Then the border fabric that she used down here, this is a Kimberbell. And we have seen this uh, many times here lately, all in different colorways. This is a black, is that not striking? So I had shown you I got a couple of the same uh, prints from the Kimberbell in wide backings in a red and then in an aqua um, to have here uh, for quilts that come into my studio. This is a black and that is just really pretty. I like that. A good choice for a background or for the border fabric. The backing fabric, let me get in close so you can see this is Hash Dot by Michael Miller. Do you see the fabric? And um, Lori did a nice pieced backing. Let me lay this up here. So taking scraps from the front, we have um, the same progression. So they may have been cut off the end of them even, I don't know. So we have the black polka dot, the red gingham, the black and a white heart, and then the same um, polka dot print in the red, then in a bigger piece done across the middle. Really cute. Now on the back you can see really well the pantograph. This is the 60s Mod Butterfly pantograph. Really cute. So this actually stitches out this way. So when you're loading your quilt, <laughs> lots of lint on here, when you're loading your quilt on the long arm it does stitch out side to side like this. And that looks good, but I, I really, I think the pattern itself, it quilts out this way, but I think you will want to orient your quilt so that the butterflies are running up and down on the quilt, on the front of the quilt. Hard to see it kind of with all the busyness of those fabrics on the front, but you can kind of check it out there. You can see it really well on the backing. So again, when you're, if you're doing this, if you're a digital um, long armor and you're um, doing this one, just understand that it stitches out horizontally and you will need to orient your quilt the correct way. We used a light gray thread on this one. Um, light gray is just as much of a neutral as a cream or a white. On these color fabrics, you can see it, but it blends in without being overpowering. Really cute, Lori. Very nice. This one measured 40 by 40. So like I said, I had a lot of smaller quilts in this week. I was able to, to knock out many in one day. So, All right, let's move on to some others. This next one is Timberline Fabric Line, and you'll enjoy this one too.
Cami did a really nice job on this quilt. I really love the colorways. This is, uh, like I mentioned, the Timberline quilt um, fabric that is done by Jessica Swift for Art Gallery Fabrics. Art Gallery Fabrics have a, a distinct feel to their fabrics. They're almost a little slick, um, very um, cool to the touch, and all of the fabrics are that way. It's just, I'm not sure why they're a little different, but it's a nice, a nice slicky, um, not slick, but it just has a nice cool touch to it. Um, and so this is the Timberline fabric line. And uh, Cammie said she did not use a pattern for this. She actually used a 60 degree ruler, and I'll link that down below, to create the uh, triangles, 60 degree triangle ruler, and then um, joined those together. Did a really nice job with the placement of colors. Again, very fallish. She did a pieced backing, just one fabric across the top, and then a different one across the bottom. Really cute. Now you can see, I'll show you on the back, the pantograph. This is called Prism Peaked. Really cute. I just thought this one went so well with the front. Just really emphasized the triangles. Um, added a secondary texture, especially on some of the um, negative space that we have with some of those white fabrics. Love, love, love. And the way the um, the pantograph stitches over itself, and then it makes different size triangles. So we have smaller ones, and then we have a little bit bigger ones, and then bigger ones. Just really, this one complemented this quilt really well. Really cute. Just one of those that um, when a quilt comes in, and I, I think Cami had given you know, some other suggestions of ones that she liked. And um, this was one time when I, I sent it back and I said, I have a really good pantograph that will look really cute with this. And um, and it may not, I don't, I couldn't even tell you if it's on my website or not, just because I get new ones in all the time and I don't always get my website updated. And that's why I like you to, um, you know, tell me some suggestions and you can be firm. You can say, this is the one I want and that that's exactly what I'll do for you. If you're kind of wavering between several, um, just note the different ones you like. And then if I get it in and something like this, where it's like, could you look at this one? Cause I think this one's really cute. I think it would look really nice with it. Sometimes that just happens. And, um, and you could tell me, no, you know, that that's your choice. This is your quilt. Um, but this one just looked really, really cute. And on this one as, as well, we did, it's a, touch of an off-white thread um, because I wanted it to blend with this. I just wanted the texture um, on it. I didn't want to overpower with any color, so I didn't use white because even though this fabric appears very white, um, the white thread was a little too bright on it. So using with just the tad bit of an off-white created the texture, soaks right into that color um, without overpowering. So, so cute. I love this one. This one measured 36 by 38, and just using that ruler. No pattern needed. So, all right, I have a second one of Cammie's. This second one of Cammie's is so adorable. Look at these little animals. I think she said this one was for her daughter, um, an infant daughter, and I just love, I don't know the fabric line. She said this is a mix of different fabric lines. I'm assuming this is a panel, and if I can find it, I'll link it down below. You can see the giraffe um, up there, and there's a kitty cat and a duck and a rabbit, um, a little fawn, and a little lamb down there. So, so cute. Just reminds me of things from when I was a kid. But then the setting blocks that she's used, she said she based this on, um, it was inspired by the Sunny Patches by Corey Yoder. So I will link Corey Yoder's um, YouTube and um, website down below. She has been doing a 
a sort of a mystery quilt along. So what she did is she showed you the layout, which is very similar to what Cammie's done here. And then where Cammie has these blocks cut from a panel, then um, Cory Yoder is actually, that's the mystery part. You don't know what those blocks are. And so as the months have gone along, she's given you different blocks um, to create each month. I don't know if it's a month or monthly or weekly. I didn't pay attention to those details. But where um, Cammie has this panel print in here, then that's where Cory Yoder is giving you um, a, a, a block to make to put into that spot. So really cute. And so um, the part that's inspired by the sunny patches are these parts here. This is a free download on Cory Yoder's website. Uh, Cammie has done hers a tad bit different, but you can go in um, where she has made hers um, follow in the same... Um, direction as the diagonal across that you're making where Cory Yoders are done more on a horizontal or a vertical and then added with that half uh, half square triangle. Um, Cammie chose to do hers on the diagonal which is a great effect, really cute. So you can um, kind of see the the star print that it makes around each one of those around each one of the panel blocks. Really nice. The backing fabric, really cute, and I, um, I've i trimmed this up for Cami, and I don't have the selvages here in front of me, but I do believe this was an art gallery fabric as well. It still has that same cool, cool feel to the touch. The front fabric, she said, were all mixes, um, things that she had, so uh, I can see some um, 30s prints, uh, maybe some Lori Holt ones, all, a good mixture there. Um, and then this one, I'll link this one down below because I do have the selvage left from this that I can link that for you. But a pink. And then you can see the pantograph. We chose the ginger flower pantograph. And Lori had asked that I make this three or four inches wide. Um, not too tight because she didn't want it to be, you know, too, too dense. Uh, I think this was a nice coverage. Added many different flowers, several flowers on each one of the blocks created a nice um, fill-in effect for uh, the negative space in the white part. We did choose a white thread for this one because of all of the white um, background fabric. We wanted to use a white thread. And you can see that um, the backing fabric has a little bit of like a hashtag type um, print to it there too. Just adorable. Really precious. See the little duck. Can you see the duck? Isn't it cute? A printed little duck. <laughs> He's got his own little fabric body. It's really cute. I have one more of Cammie's and you can see a little hint of it up below or up, below, <laughs> up above there and so uh, you'll want to see this one. This is uh, Cammie's third quilt, and she made this using the six-inch pineapple paper from Fat Quarter Shop, um, put out by It's So Emma. She did 80 blocks using this pineapple paper. What a great way to use up your scraps, and how striking is that when it's all finished? Um, each one of these, oh wow, I mean, this is some small little things, and that's why you do it with, uh, with the uh, foundation paper. Um, because you can do these tiny little pieces and not have to be handling all of those. If you're familiar with, with foundation paper, uh, you have the piece of paper with uh, the pineapple. I may have, I'm not going to dig it out. I think I have some around here. But um, you, So you start with your, your base square, uh, your, pine, your paper would be underneath that, and then you're taking a, a larger piece of fabric. It's not this skinny little one, but you're starting with one little strip and you're sewing along the line, pressing that back, and then you're uh, putting the next piece of fabric and pressing that back, trimming up your edges and things. It's a great way to do um, fussy blocks like this without having all the tiny, tiny pieces. So you'll want to check into that if you've never done uh, foundation paper piecing. So all scraps, um, the back 
ground fabric that you see, this white, this is called Birthday, and it's got confetti is what it looks like. That is the one constant through the whole quilt. Every block uses that Birthday fabric. That is by Sarah Watts, and I'll link that down below. So that she used that on all of the pineapple blocks. She did do a little bit of a sashing in between here. If you can see, she's got one little square. They're different ones each time. Um, so she's done a one piece of sashing but around each of the blocks with a little setting square. <laughs> Fussy cut a little face in that one. Um, but there are just other scraps that are left over from the pineapple blocks. It's not the same color each time. Not coordinated necessarily with the block next to it. It's just kind of random. But wow, that is so, so pretty. So, so pretty. Now, look at this. Oh, she did a minky on the back. This is so soft, so soft. And look at the pantograph, how that just jumps out. All texture, so pretty. Again, we did the 60s Mod Butterfly. We did this one larger than I did on the rail fence block. Um, there was so much going on the front. Cami asked if we make this a little bigger so that it didn't compete with all that. So these, um, these butterflies, you know, they're a good, uh, I don't know, four or five inches across there, where the other ones were much smaller. Oh, this is just adorable. So, I mean, you could sit and pet this all day. Oh, it feels so good. I did use, let me look, I did um, an off-white thread. Uh, I could have used white. Um, I used the off-white because, again, this backing fabric, um, I would say it's a a tad bit on the um, creamier side of white than white white if that makes sense and we had so many different colors in here I just felt that the the off-white it's I mean it's gonna read white um, but I can tell looking at it that it's uh, that I think it's an off-white thread and then it just soaks into that backing oh the minky is so soft so so pretty so that's Cammie's quilt. This one measured 59 by 72, 86 <laughs> inch blocks. So really, really pretty and a great way to use up all those uh, fabrics. You're just choosing ones that go together. So all purples here and all yellows. And she has done the same. Each um, ring has the same. So the inner ring is the same fabrics and then the, the second ring is the same fabrics and the third ring is the same fabrics but different ones for different yellow blocks. Not every yellow block is the same. Great way to use up all those. I mean, she's got everything in here. She's got little novelty prints and penguins, um, faces, dogs, hearts, strawberries. I, it's, got, it's got everything. It all works together when you're cutting them that small. So really cute. All right, I have one more quilt, and this one's a big one, and it's a fun one, so here are pictures of it. Shelly sent me this one, and this is her Bee Vintage quilt. This was a quilt along that Lori Holt did with her So Simple Shapes. These were her large So Simple Shapes. Um, so each block makes um, a vintage motif. So we have overall sand, we have a kitten, we have a teapot, we have butterflies, we have flowers, we have apples, we have this cute house. We do have Sunbonnet Sue. Um, the house is adorable. Looks like a little gingerbread house. We have the cherries, um, the Scotty dog up there. Do you see the Scotty dog? So, so cute. This is all the B Vintage fabric. This is still available as a kit from the Fat Quarter Shop. And uh, just like Lori's other quilt alongs, the So Long Guide is on her website and you can follow along on how to do each one of the blocks. And then Shelly has done machine applique. She has switched colors of thread around each one so that it blends with it. She will add some of the embellishments on at the end, like on, um, so like the cat, he'll have some eyes and she'll add those buttons on later. I do not do, because I'm doing edge to edge designs, I don't want any of the buttons or embellishments like that on here first. 
but rickrack is fine. Um, as long as you sew it down, and this one, uh, Shelly did a nice job, she sewed it down, and then the long arm quilting can go right over the top of that. I do use a scoop foot on my long arm. Um, if you use a regular hopping foot, then sometimes it can um, get caught on some of this, things like this, and it can fold it over as it's going across, so I always keep um, uh, one of the scoop feet or glide foot is what they're calling it now. Um, I believe is what they're calling it now, uh, on my sewing machine so that it, it, it's smooth on the bottom so it smooths right over that and doesn't tend to push those over. It's really cute. So the rickrack is already on there. And that's why, as long as your applique is sewed down really nice too, goes right over all the applique too. So for the, let me show you the backing fabric. She chose a blue, a little bit of a mottled, um, rich blue. And then that shows off the pantograph really well. I chose the two scoops pantograph for this one. So very similar to Wishbone that you've seen me use before. The two scoops has um, is very is more angular and then cut off and creates that ice cream cone effect on the top. So um, love this one. And actually, when I was stitching this out, I sent a picture to uh, my online quilt membership and I said, look at the quilt that I have on the long arm today. And I said, and look at the pantograph because it mimics a, um, a crosshatch pantograph. And um, I love this. I just think it, it's um, a little more modern feel than a crosshatch. I love crosshatch too. But I felt like it gave that kind of hint to the crosshatch, so the hint to the vintage. Um, but then added a little bit more of a modern feel with that, with that ice cream scoop cone thing across the top. And again, doesn't it kind because you can kind of see the diagonal lines and it kind of creates that, that crosshatch type of feel on this. But so, so fun. Shelly did a wonderful job um, on her applique and um, these shapes are a little larger uh, than, the, than the ones, than, than Lori's normal ones where she's doing the calico garden. Um, really cute. And, and actually I had someone in my online guild said, oh, I love the Scotty dog. I wish I could just get the shape for the Scotty dog. Uh, and I would make a whole quilt with just the Scotty dog. So, um, I don't know, maybe just a little bit of feedback. Maybe Lori would want that. I, I don't know if that could be sold as, um, a template in itself. Um, you know, maybe the house block could be sold as a template in itself or the, the teapot as a, you know, in a smaller package, just that so that if you enjoy the teapot, but not necessarily the rest of the ones that you can make a whole quilt with just teapots or same thing with the flowers or the house or the Scotty dog or, um, any one of those. So I don't know, might be a, a, a some good feedback for them to hear. Love how this, the sashing. I know it's done in strips, then with the one square as your setting square, and uh, how it creates that effect there too. Really, really cute. All right, those are all the quilts today. That's been a marathon, hasn't it? Um, just real quick, this quilt measures 72 by 85. It's a really nice size quilt, uh, and Shelly will be getting that back uh, in just a few days. So that's all the quilts I have for today. I hope you're making lots of time to quilt. And as I always say, every quilt is worth finishing. So pull them out of those boxes, out of the cedar chest, uh, the ones you did 20 years ago, and um, send them on to me. Let's get those finished so that you can use them. You worked hard on them. So I uh, hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time.